Hey everybody, I'm Jesse Showalter, and in this episode, we're gonna be taking a look at one of my favorite design softwares of all time, the thing I spend 99% of my time in, that's Sketch for Mac. One of the best, in my opinion, softwares for digital designers who wanna do web, product, software design, Sketch for Mac is for you. In this video, we're gonna be doing a basic overview of the interface, simple commands, getting your projects up and running, and a few tips and tricks on how to really soup up the program. This will be a great tutorial for people who have never used Sketch for Mac or maybe dabbled a little bit, but not fully committed to transitioning over to using it all the time. By the end of this video, you should be really confident in using Sketch and confident to make the switch. Let's get started. If you go to the website at sketchapp.com, you can just scroll down and see that it's specifically made for people who do software and websites and product design. It's built for you and me with features like toolkits and non-destructive editing, vector editing, pixel precision, all that good stuff. I won't say any more about it except that I love it and I think that you'll probably love it. You can download a free trial. This is not a sponsored video. I just really, really love the software and I think that it would be a benefit for you to use it if you've never tried it. So check out sketchapp.com, download a free trial, and then if you like it, maybe purchase it or not, whatever. After you install it, all you gotta do is come down to your dock and fire it up and you'll get this nice, simple kind of pop-up. You can start a new project, you can go back to recent files, you can even work with some pre-made templates that Sketch has for you, but we are gonna start a new document simply by clicking New Document. If you've used modern design software, this is gonna look really, really familiar. It's gonna have a panel on the left, tools on the top, and another panel over on the right that is contextual depending on what you are doing and using. With this ginormous kind of artboard or workspace in the middle. It's really, really great. And there's nothing on our artboard, and that's because we haven't made anything yet. When you download Sketch, your tools and your setups might look a little bit different because you can customize it to your liking simply by right clicking and putting customize toolbar. You could return it to the default if you wanted to, but you can pull any of these extra tools and put them inside of the toolbar. All of these tools can be found in the upper menus somehow, some way, but by giving yourself quick access here in the upper menu, you really allow yourself to just speed up your workflow and kind of customize it to your liking. So. It may look a little bit different, but you'll get the point. One of the first things you'll notice when you fire up Sketch for Mac is that this entire canvas area is blank. You can draw things on it like squares and shapes, but that's not really how it's supposed to operate here in Sketch for Mac. You're supposed to be working on artboards. Artboards are one of the key features of Sketch for Mac that allow you to not only do one design and then have to turn on and off layers, but to do entire designs from start to finish. I'm talking applications from the launch screen through every single little design screen you can have an artboard for and later on with some special tools, even prototype. Being able to see your design at a glance holistically is gonna be one of the best things about Sketch and why so many other design platforms are starting to jump on that bandwagon now. To make an artboard, you can simply press the hotkey of A, and that'll bring up all of the different sizes. Apple device sizes, Android, responsive web design, paper sizes, and you can simply pick one like this iPhone 8. You'll notice that as soon as I place an artboard in my work area within this canvas here, over in the left-hand panel, this is the layers panel. And you can see its title, and I can rename this artboard simply by double-clicking and naming it Home, and now you'll see the designator on the top of the artboard itself is named Home. If you wanna move this artboard around, simply grab it by the name, you'll see the entire bounding box of the artboard is highlighted, and you can simply move that around your workspace. If you wanna duplicate it, like every other program in the world, you can just Alt-click or Alt-drag, and you can create a second artboard. You can then select it in the Layers panel, and rename that one. You can reposition layers, in the layers panel so that you have some sort of understanding of where things are. Now that you understand artboards, let's talk about one of the next biggest things to us digital designers, and that would be working with a grid. To open up a grid or a layout on your artboard, simply select the artboard you'd like to work with, and you can either go up into your tools panel and click the show layout button, or you can simply press control L, and that will turn on and off your layout or your grid. 
If I zoom in, you can see that it has a color, it has spacing, and if you'd like to manipulate uh, all of the details to your grid, go to your layout settings, and you can actually change the gutters and the width. The current grid that's being used is at 960, but if you'd like to bump that up, you can see that it happens in real time. So maybe I want something more like an 1140 grid, and I want the whole thing to be centered, and I don't like how wide the gutters are, so I can close those up just a little bit. Now you have a customized grid that when you start drawing shapes, on, you'll know exactly where you need to draw them. Now my grid is established, everything's working like I want it, it's set up like I want it, and I can continue working smartly for the rest of my project. When it comes to designing websites and having multiple artboards because there's multiple screen resolutions, having multiple artboards might be the way to go, but there's also some plugins and some different things that Sketch has to offer to make your responsive life a little less hectic. One of the ways that are default and built into Sketch that I just love are the different ways to pin and assign measurements and margins right there inside of Sketch. And we'll click on an item and you can see I have my resizing options that come in my contextual panel on the right hand side. That contextual panel will change no matter what, depending on what I'm clicking. Nine times out of 10 when I'm selecting an object on the screen, whether it be text or shapes, I get resizing options. And that just tells Sketch when this artboard resizes, what do I want to happen with this individual object that I'm working with? So for instance, if I was to take this artboard and resize it down, you can see that my shape is still the same exact size. Well, we don't want that. We want it to be centered in the middle. So now when I resize my entire artboard, just like you would a, a browser, like when you're testing, um, you can see that that shape has actually resized accordingly to the constraints of the artboard or to the browser window, which is really, really nice. You can do a similar thing with grouped objects. So if I took all of these here and I press Command G to group them, I could then say I want to uh, fix the height and anchor it to the top. And now you can see as I start resizing, so does the actual individual elements within that group, which is also really, really nice. You can't do things as extensively as you would be able to do in pure CSS, like actually move things around or redirect them in something like Flexbox or CSS Grid, but it's a great way to have some general responsive nature to your designs as you're designing. We mentioned the layers panel over in the left-hand portion of the screen. Right above that, it's saying that we're on page one. And so there are pages as well as artboards. If you just drop down the arrow, you can see that current page we're on. You also have the ability to make a completely separate page. Like this one could be the wireframes, and this one can be the low-res mockups, and then you can do high-res mockups. You can do any and everything you wanna do and, and leave things within their individual page. Really, really good for versions and for the process of kind of bringing your designs to life. We've touched on it a little bit, but dragging out shapes and actually creating designs in Sketch for Mac is really, really seamless and really intuitive. You can see I have shapes up here in my control panel. You can also uh, add a shape by doing insert and any of these individual things here. The tools you have to work with are basically shapes, vector, pencil. Maybe you wanna use a pencil tool. I've used it a couple times actually. There's also text, images, add new artboards. Basic shapes are really, really easy. You can either select one from here or you can select one from the tool menu up top. Like if you wanted to do a uh, triangle, just simply click and now you can see the little cursor is ready to drop a triangle wherever you tell it to. So I'm gonna drop that out. Of course, there's basic controls like holding shift to constrain the proportions, all that kind of fun stuff. And as soon as you have a shape selected, again, all of those contextual options show up. So I can change the color to it and add a border, a couple basic you know, style commands like shadows and inner shadows. We can blur it if we wanted to. So there's some of those basic things. Obviously when working with shapes, you have the ability to measure from one shape to another. Like if I have this red shape here, you can see as I, as I get close to it, a lot of smart snapping guides show up, which is really nice. But if you're in a place that you don't have a smart snapping guide, like here, all you have to do is hold down the option and point towards any other object on the artboard and it'll give you some form of measurement. You can also align with basic alignment tools by selecting two things, like this group of gray squares and this red rectangle, and you can align things to the left or to the right, to the top or to the bottom. You can distribute, which is really, really nice. So has all those basic alignment tools you would need. 
One of the most powerful features, in my opinion, of Sketch is the ability to create styles, whether they be shape styles or layer styles or text-based styles, and save those, creating a catalog of styles you're using in your project that you iterate as you go. And similar to CSS, like cascading style sheets, you're able to make that change to that style or class, so to speak, and watch those changes cascade across your entire project. Let's say I was working with some text here and I'm just gonna type something out, like this is my headline style. And in working with my headline style, I maybe I'm gonna work with Helvetica, but I really want this one to be bold. I'm gonna create a text style up here in my contextual panel. I'm gonna create a new text style called headline. We'll just call it headline. And it saved that style. Now any text that I'm working with, I can change to be using that style that I've already designated. Now what's really great is, later on in my project, let's say this headline is not really big enough, I really want it to be maybe that big, like really big. Well, what I'm gonna do is simply press this re double refresh arrow symbol, this icon, within the styles, and it's gonna update that entire style across my project. You can see how great that would be for your body copy, for your headlines. Something doesn't look quite right, you don't wanna go through every artboard and change it, you want to be able to just change everything on the fly in your entire project. Lights out, amazing. In a similar way, Sketch has allowed you to create reusable interface components that they call symbols. Symbols allow you to create one thing one time and reuse it, and then if you need to change it on the fly, it'll change it everywhere. Creating a symbol is simple. It looks like this. Taking something you've already made, maybe souping it up a little bit, after I'm done doing that, I have both of those things selected, the text and the shape. I'm gonna come up here and press this little icon that says create symbol. Notice how the create symbol icon and the style, the text style icons are similar because they're reusable components. So I'm gonna name this symbol button and now anytime I want a button, I can simply drop down and go to my symbols and I can add a button that I've already created. Maybe I want one up here in my big hero image as well. I can move that whole thing up. Now if I don't like my button, which I don't, because the shape of the corners is a little bit funky, maybe I want to go back and be a little bit, you know, a little bit more square, like a rounded square. I just double click and you'll notice I've been shot to a specific page that's been created for me. It's a symbols page. And, and I can return back to the instance of that symbol or I can change the master copy of that symbol. I want to do that. I want to just you know, take down those edges a little bit, and maybe blue's not quite my style. I'm gonna move over to this purple, and when I go back, you'll see every instance of that symbol has been changed throughout my entire project, hallelujah. If the native features of Sketch weren't powerful enough already, they've opened up the program to the developer community and allowed them to create amazing plugins that you can purchase for very cheap or the majority of the time they're for free. It has a great community, a huge community of developers that are making awesome things for designers like you and me. You can reuse palettes, you can prototype, you can put in stock imagery and lorem ipsum all with the click of a button using amazing plugins. And I'll put some links down in the description to some of my favorite plugins and even another video I did on some Sketch plugins that are awesome and amazing. Last thing we gotta talk about is one of Sketch's most amazing features and that is the exporting process here in Sketch. Anytime an object is selected within Sketch, in the contextual panel down on the bottom right, you'll get the make exportable option that comes up. By clicking plus, you can assign different export sizes and you can export as many different sizes all at the same time. You don't need to save them out one at a time. Like if I wanted to export this out for iOS or Android, you could simply choose the size you want to do at 2x, tell it, it how, what you want the designator to be named as on the end of it, and what format you'd like it to export out as. You can export PDFs, PNGs, SVGs, JPEGs, all the normal stuff with normal image control as well. And with a click of a button, the export button, you can put multiple versions of the same element in your directory like that. If that wasn't enough, Sketch has also given you some presets you can work with, like iOS or Android. So if I wanted to work some Android assets as well, I could export those, and you can see, 
bam, just in an instant, I did five exports like that. I also really love the fact that you can select an individual element and you can even drag the layer, you can see I'm dragging the layer, and just drag that out onto the desktop as well or into your directory. So you can actually just grab individual elements and export them like that. Overall, Sketch is an easy to use, easy to learn, modern workflow for the digital designer. If you haven't used it, I recommend you try it. Go download the free trial today and let me know what your thoughts are about Sketch for Mac. Thanks so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave a thumbs up and maybe think about subscribing to the channel. I like to do lots of videos about design and development and product reviews just like this one, so stick around. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them down in the comments and I'll get back to them as soon as I can. I hope you guys are designing amazing things and I hope you're making amazing things. Talk to you guys in the next one. See you later.